Hey Sci Guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I feed my python frozen thawed rats and also I'm going to be going over how I trained her to eat frozen dead food. With a lot of snakes you're going to find that especially if they've been eating live food from the person that you got them from or if they're just a bit of a finicky eater a lot of people just say oh just feed them live or just wiggle the rat around like crazy i personally believe that you should if it's possible feed your animal frozen dead food as they get bigger it can be dangerous if you have to really wiggle around big food for them when they get really big and feeding live is just bad in so many ways because when they get bigger they're eating really big rats or rabbits the prey can really damage your animal so enjoy the video enjoy my terrible voiceover and i'll see you at the end Cyanide's voice here. The first thing you're going to want to do is choose the appropriate size of rodent for your snake. This can be done by sort of putting your fingers around your snake in its thickest part and choosing something a wee bit bigger or about the same. With carpet pythons and other of the like, you can do something just a little bit bigger, but to keep it safe, just choose something around that girth. So you're going to take your frozen, appropriately sized frozen rat and pop it into a separate Ziploc bag. You are then gonna take that rat, put the rest back in the freezer obviously, and then take that one and pop it in your fridge overnight. Very attractive fridge and lady. The next morning, take it out of the fridge, not the freezer, I've literally just woken up here so my brain's not really working. Uh, put it into a bowl and fill the bowl with warm water. You're then going to weigh it down with something just so it's kind of submerged. There was a bit of trapped air in that one so it was floating too much. So I just use an electric can opener to sit it on top. And when it's about been about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, flip it over so that both sides get warm. Uh, 40 minutes, hour, half hour, whatever later, just when the rat is warmed through to about body temperature. Um, it's a, you don't need to use a dishwashing glove like I have here, but I am demonstrating if you're nervous about feeding your snake, then you can use a glove and some large forceps. Um, normally I would just throw it in and then shut the door, but for the purpose of the video, I'm just making sure she knows it's there. There we go. See, I can see she knows it's there, so I'm just shutting the tank. And then I just left the house for a couple of hours. Um, I actually just left this filming when I left, so I've sped up through a lot of it. It sometimes takes Medusa a little while to find it and position herself right. So I've sped through a lot of this just to give you the idea, and it's okay. Like, my friend fed her when I was overseas. <laughs> I think I just grabbed my keys in a second because I'm still there. And then I leave. Oh, my friend fed her and she kept messaging me like, she hasn't eaten it yet, she hasn't found it yet. It's like, she'll find it, give her time. Medusa always just needs a little time. I get, gave up a lot when she was a babe before I got her to eat. And when I just left it in there overnight, it was gone by morning. So yeah, she'll just kind of figure out where it is eventually and then clasp onto it. Not in there, baby. That's your water. She sniffs it a lot and like bites it some and then realizes that it's a rat and she's got to eat it from the head. It's really funny I find when she eats it from the butt because it's so much harder like when you think about it the head is such a streamlined end you'd think they would choose that but she's just funny sometimes. This is all sped through like a lot faster by the way she's not having a spaz attack she's actually moving quite slowly. Um... <laughs> you can't eat it like that baby you have to do it from the end. So yeah, I'm going to talk a little about the myths of feeding your snake outside the tank. I do not buy into the myth at all that you should remove your snake before and put them in a different tub and then feed them in a separate tub. Because the idea of it is that your snake kind of knows when it's in the tub it's feeding time so they're less likely to be cage defensive. But if you're using that logic, then wouldn't every time you open the tank make them think it's feeding time anyway? So yeah, I've literally never had a problem with her biting me in the tank or anything like that. I mean, hey, feel free to have your own opinion, but that's mine. And I only have one carpet python, so take take what you will from my wealth of knowledge. Aunt Medusa has never missed a meal. Um, I had a little bit of trouble getting her to eat when she was a baby. And I really wanted her to eat still food instead of wiggly waggly food. Like, you know, using a dead mouse but wiggling around like crazy. 
So I just trained her by just leaving it in with her until she eventually ate. I tried it every couple of days to once a week until she eventually ate. And then one day she did and she hasn't missed a single meal since. The only other meal that she's missed was when she was in shed. And that's fair enough. Snakes don't really like to eat when they're in shed. She just didn't touch it. So that's pretty normal for a snake not eat during shed. Now I just don't attempt to feed her during shed because she knows what she's doing. And as soon as she's done, she gets a big nice dinner and then I might give her the feeding after that a little bit sooner. I generally feed Medusa every 10 to 14 days now. When she was a young little baby, it was every five days to once a week. Then I've just sort of slowly upped the prey size and put down, I mean, put up the amount of days I feed her in between whatever you know what i'm starting to say you know what i'm trying to say it's fine uh it just it never gets old so i've had medusa for three years and average feeding of once every week so gosh you know it's been like 150 feedings and it still never gets old i think it's fantastic i've never really watched her eat like this for a long time so i left the house in this video so the recording just happened for three hours until my webcam automatically stops recording when it gets to three hours. And it was really fun for me to kind of watch through some of the footage because even after she's finished eating, it's so cute. She like yawns heaps and like rubs her face on stuff and it's the cutest shit ever. And then she eventually sort of snuggles into a nice position to digest. Um, it's really important to not handle your snake as well a couple of days after they eat just because it's a bit uncomfortable for them is the first reason and the second reason is regurgitation so think about a snake in the wild so if they eat right they're slower as we all are and a snake's meal is about 10 to 15 percent of its body weight so imagine you weigh 150 pounds right so that's like 20 pounds of food Imagine eating that in one sitting. You do not want to get up and do shit. That sounds fucking horrible. And yes, you're going to be slow. So in the wild, if a snake has just fed and then it feels threatened or it's in danger or any sort of situation like that, it will regurgitate the meal so it can get away faster. So it's just one of those things to look out for. They're quite, I find this one is quite hypersensitive after she's eaten. Like even if I go by the tank, she looks a little bit like, oh God, what's about to happen? Because she knows instinctually that she can't get away as quickly if something were to happen. So, and the reason that regurgitation is such a big problem with snakes is because their stomach acid is so strong. It is strong enough to dissolve bones. So if they vomit, and that stomach acid gets in their mouth, on their teeth, in their jaw, on their face, on you. It can be quite dangerous just because it's an extremely strong acid. It's extremely caustic. So your snake's very likely to experience problems. And it's just something you want to avoid at all costs. And imagine cleaning up a partially regurgitated rat. Like... I don't know, that sounds pretty fucking horrible to me. It took me long enough to not feel nauseous every time I fed her. I mean, I'm vegan. I wasn't vegan when I first got her. People ask me all the time, like, oh, why did you get a snake if you're vegan and you have to feed it rats? It's like, if you want a snake, you gotta feed it rats. And that, that is the circle of life. You know, a snake cannot survive on anything other than whole rodents. Human beings can survive just fine on plants, and so that's what I have, and I'm perfectly healthy. But if I tried to give her a vegan diet, she would die. She wouldn't- they do not accept anything except rodents. I see on forums all the time, people are like, Oh, can I just give my snake something from the butcher? Like, rah rah rah. Your snake's not gonna eat anything, and even if they did, they really need the organs. They need the bones. They need everything. So... That's pretty much what you gotta do. I've also heard vets talk about giving supplements to snakes. If your snake is eating whole rodents, they do not need supplements. Inside the whole rodent is absolutely everything they need. There's also a debate of whether to use furred or deferred rats. A lot of pet shops will offer both, and the furred ones are a little deferred ones are obviously a little more expensive because they've gone through the process of taking the fur off. I would say that is probably healthier for your animal, but it is less natural at the same time because the, the snake 
can easily digest bone, but for some reason they can't digest fur very well. So if your snake is having problems with constipation or digestion in any way, I would definitely recommend the deferred rats. But if your snake is having a fine time with these guys, you're doing fine. Also another thing, if your snake is kind of between sizes, so you're feeding them two at one time, which I did for a while, it's much more likely to get issues from having more fur, if that makes sense. So there's such, there's a much larger surface area on two small rats than one big one. So more fur, a lot more fur. And I had a problem with her, she had some constipation and I took her to the vet and it went fucking everywhere. I might do a story time on that, because that's a pretty hilarious story. She just shat over everything. Uh, like this video if you think that I should do a story time on the time that Medusa shat all over the vet and the vet's assistant and it was his first time, first day on the job, because that was a really funny day. I can't take her anywhere. This is why we can't have nice things, Medusa. Oh, it never gets old watching your snake have its dinner. I wish humans were that cool when they ate. Like, I wish it was interesting to look at. Because when humans eat, there's just nothing attractive about it, you know? There is no way to attractively eat. <laughs> I love this part because it kind of looks like the tail is her massive tongue. <laughs> like, she has a really big tongue that's just sticking out of her mouth. So that's why I like it when she eats it from the head as well. Like, it's easier for her and it just looks hilarious. It's like my favorite thing ever. Oh, and also if you have an arboreal snake, if you haven't provided the perch for it, you can have a lot of issues with feeding and digestion as well. So if your snake isn't eating for some reason and it's a boreal snake that doesn't have a perch or somewhere to hang off, they might be refusing to eat because in the wild they usually hang from branches when they eat. So it's pretty important to provide that for them just so they can have that option. I mean, Medusa doesn't always, but most of the time... She'll, and see she's kind of using it here to push the food down a little bit. They like to hang when they eat. Nom 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 nom. Alright, well thanks for watching the video, Sai guys. I'm sure I'll speak to you soon. Well, thanks for watching, Sai guys. Don't forget to leave us a comment because we rely on the validation of strangers.